Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sessions Cafe, brought to you by Intrigue Magazine. I'm your host, Kerry D. Singleton, and today we have part two of my conversation with my good friend, Treston Irby from the group High Five. Uh, again, thank you for being on the Thanks show. Again. Thanks for having me We're again. We're going to continue man. this conversation yes, from sir. last week. Um, uh, so, it's going to get a little personal um, as we sit here and talk about uh, stories and, uh, and, and dialogue from your autobiographical book, uh, Hiatus. Um, talk to me about, let's talk about, there was a car accident on I-95 in Florida that made a lot of changes, not just in your life, but in, in, the, in the realm of, of, of High Five. I'll just give you the floor. That was the, well, okay, well, um, we was on a highway in Florida, Miami, 95. Um, um, we was driving at a pretty much, I don't know, a normal speed. It wasn't mm-hmm. fast or nothing like that. Yeah, well, in Florida, everything's fast. Yeah, Speeding, was, yeah, 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 yeah. But next thing you know, it, you right. know, it just, everything came to a quick stop and the, the person who was driving our vehicle didn't, couldn't stop in, in, in enough time, you know what I mean, traffic. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, somebody did like this and we smacked them. And you know, yeah, it, it was it was pretty bad, you know, there was a um, fatality. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, right okay, in front of I me. Didn't know that. Yeah. So, one of the uh, passengers in the other car. The car that we hit. Hit. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you had to see that. Yeah, yeah. I seen him take his last breath right in oh, front of me. Oh, my God, bro. Um, Jesus. That was terrible. Um, all of our records and stuff was on the floor, you know. On the road. On the road, excuse me. Oh, man. Yeah, then, like. <sighs> When the fans realized, because the wind was blowing, right? So all our stuff was flying all over the, you know, all yeah. over the place. And then right. when the fans realized who was in the vehicle, yeah, you know, oh, they started man. crying and trying to run over, you know, to the to the car in the middle of the highway. Yeah, people was because it was so bad. Oh man, that people was trying to run to help. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Right, and, right. Um, and then they realized who they were helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That happened. That happened. You know. Um, and that was the day when my man Pooh D. Clark, rest in peace. Um, he got uh, paralyzed. Right there. Right there. On the Where spot. were you on your way to a radio interview? Yeah, or? yeah a radio okay, interview. Wow. We was doing radio back in the day. We had the, the rep. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The jive rep yeah, and everything. Yeah. We was. Oh man! Doing our interviews and, and you know working the record and stuff like that. So everybody is going to know about this accident because you were due to be at a radio station. Yeah, never made it. Type, oh man! Type stuff, you know what I mean? So it was everywhere, you know. Then they landed a helicopter on the um, on the highway. They used the what's that? The, the jaws of jaws death. of life. Jaws of life. Yeah. yeah, jaws of life to to pry my man, you know, out of the door. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember I was holding his head. I remember, you know, he was say he couldn't move, but I was just holding his head, and me and Tony was praying and crying at the same time, you know, because he was just saying, yo, I can't, I can't feel my legs, I can't feel my mm. legs. So immediately he yeah. felt. Yeah, immediately he said he can't get up, he couldn't yeah. get up, you know what I mean? So military school went right into my brain, so I immediately just grabbed, you know, Right here and just held held it, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, so that it just didn't move until somebody came. And thankfully, at that point, he survived. But of course, that was that point was certainly the end of his music career. Definitely. Yeah, because he couldn't perform. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely, and, and and you know, we stayed out in Florida. Me, Mac, and um, Tone stayed out in Florida for a couple of weeks with him mm-hmm. to go visit him and it was crazy seeing your boy you know what i'm saying have like you remember frankenstein mm-hmm. you know those things that the, the, the yeah. two the, you know what i'm saying yeah the having, boats yeah having the boats yeah. the boat yeah uh, he you know seeing your boy with two bolts in his head with brown stuff in there you know because they keeping his head, head still, still. Yeah. and they just like turn him like he's on a rotisserie man you, you know what i'm saying like the bears the bed was just, it was just, it was just flipping them like a rotisserie chicken, man, for real. And it was just like the worst thing I've ever seen. And I just, I'm just using those words so y'all 
you can understand. You illustrate, can yeah, yeah. Illustrate, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I can yeah. illustrate what mm -hmm. it is so you can visualize what it could possibly look like right. to see your boy, you know what I'm saying, not able to do nothing to, to with screws in his head. Move. You know what I'm saying? And the bed is just and turning I'm a, over I'm and over. I'm also assuming, Trust, that um, why you and other fellas and Pooh's family and friends and other loved ones are, you know, going through this, it's being done publicly. Yeah. It's got to be hard enough to deal with one of your best friends going through that kind of pain, but then to have everybody watching you on top of that. And probably the pressure from the record label to keep it going on. Uh, no pun intended, right? Yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> um, I mean, they understood. Of course, we had to keep it going on. Yeah. Um, hence, the benefit show we did for Jive at in New York City, mm -hmm. and it was just us three, Mac, mm -hmm. me, and Tony, wow. with the all-girl band, and we went out there, and we performed with Joe to see, a bunch of cats, mm -hmm. but we went out there as three guys, high five. And high that, five yeah, with three guys. With three guys, yeah, mm -hmm. so that, that was kind of, that was, that was a uh, experience for us too, you know, to get through that as a group. That was one of the things as a group me, Tony, and Mac had to suck it up and, and, and do it do it with three guys. You know what I'm and, saying? And, and since we're talking about um, experiences, because you all have had plenty, um, I remember Tony Thompson's solo project on Bad Boy because at the time I was working for Arista Records and Bad Boy was the subsidiary of Arista. And I thought it's Tony Thompson. That's the lead singer of High Five. Uh, he's on Jive. Why is he signed to Bad Boy? And where are the other guys? What was that about? Like, what was that? Greed. Not, not Tony's fault. Mm -hmm. none but his handlers. It, yeah, none of it was Tony's fault. He was young. He didn't have the guys. It, it, it was greed, man. You know, um, um, just to stand corrected, he was signed a giant. Okay. Giant Records. We always signed a Giant. Right. But they signed him to a solo. Then His solo. High Five, High Five was signed separately to the Giant Records. Okay. Repies mm -hmm. back in the day. But they just pushed Tony's album first, which that was the mistake, um, we believe. Right. Um, we, we didn't mind him doing a solo. Right. It was just a little bit premature. Is it something it, it that you early. knew that he wanted to do? Nah, I think it was something. No, no, no. Okay, he never no. even said. It was something that he was pushed to do. Okay. You wow. know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and, and being young, you know, money is very impressionable. Right. And without the right foundation to hold you down, you could, you know, you could run to the devil. The devil could, could grab you. You know what, what did I'm it do? Never mind what did it do or not do to the group's future, what did it do to your friendship? This is a guy that you started with. Um, um, I always wanted a friendship. Yeah. I mean, the friendship has always had been there. Right. Um, I didn't necessarily um, like how it went down. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, and once again, it's not, it's not really his fault. Right. Only, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't understand how management, you know what I'm saying, could dis dismantle something like this, you know, for their greed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, we they didn't he didn't take care of us. Right. If they would have took care of us, it would have been it would have been cool. Right. You know, it would have been cooler, like, you know what I mean? But to to leave us dry to fend for ourselves, that was that was messed up. Right. You know what I'm saying? That and and, cool. and 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 then and then I mean, the streets talk, the streets the streets talk and 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 they lure, uh, and and I know that you fell victim to the streets. Um, things happen. You had to survive. I had to, I had no choice. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing like to 
glorify. I'm not trying to glorify or nothing like that. No, absolutely you know? not. Um, but yeah, survival mode kicked in. Um, um, my pride got hurt. You know what I'm saying? So when your pride get hurt, survival mode, you know, kicks in, and then then, then it's like sometimes you don't do the best. You, you 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 don't make the best, best decisions. decisions, right? And you don't know that you didn't make the best decisions until later on. I'm just thankful that I was able to make it out, right? And realize that I didn't make the best decisions. So that you know, God always been showing up for me. He continued to show up for me. That's why I'm just thankful right now to be here. Um, 2007. Does that that had to have been a rough year? Yeah, it was a rough year. <laughs> if you've been through what I've been through at that, <laughs> that time, right? Um, I know it still has to bother you because for, for those of us that love Tony Thompson, <clears throat> you know, him passing away suddenly. Yeah, when that's I got never that phone call, easy. it was crazy. No, 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 it, it was whack, to be honest, you know. Because it was just, it was crazy because I was just because me and Tone was going through some stuff on the radio and all that. Because mm -hmm. um, that had started like a different type of some fugazi high five. Right, you know what I mean? he did. Yeah, yeah. So you two weren't even necessarily on the best of terms. Nah, nah, um, nah, no. Nah. It wasn't just me. It was everybody. Right, it right. Was Again, Marcus too was the on the best of terms. terms with him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Damn. Um, yeah, there were two high fives. There was one that Tony had created, right? And, and then, then there was, there was high, five. high five, right? 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 So it had some imposters or whatever. And 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 then to find out before the air could even be cleared. Nah, the air was cleared. The air was cleared. Nah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I went to I, 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 you know, I, I I said to Marcus, you know, I got to come out there. You got to find Tone. Yeah. You know because. We got to do this. You we got to clear the air. We, we got to yeah. come back, man. And, and, you know. and before you could even, well, you know what? Let's let's take a break, and, and then we'll come back. Uh, more sessions cafe with Tristan Irby after this break. share something with you, man, that I, I'm not sure that you know. 
Um, I always wanted to live in New York City. I was born and raised in Boston. Always wanted to live in New York. Ever since I was a little kid, I used to I used to have a model of New York City in my little apartment in my bedroom in Roxbury. I grew up in the same neighborhood as New Edition. Um, and um, as much as I always wanted to move to New York and always said, I'm going to move to New York, it wasn't until 1996 that I actually made the move to New York. And there were a couple of factors that pushed me to finally move. And one of them was the fact that uh, the day before Father's Day in 1996, my father was murdered. Um, to this day, I have no idea who killed him. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank my you. My condolences. Um, it was rough. I yeah. had to go ID his body at the house that mm. the incident happened at. I had to um, do a, um, I also had to uh, do a positive identification at the morgue. Mm. Um, it was rough. Sorry about that. That was, a, that was a bad summer. And in that fall, in September of 1996, um, there were a couple other things that happened in Boston, um, for sure, that summer. But I was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. Uh, I got to get out of here. It's not even I want to move. I have to move. Right. Um, and, and, and I've always been very strong. Uh, I've had a strong opinion towards gun violence ever since. Again, to this day, it's an unsolved case up in Boston. Mm. 28 years later, I don't know who shot my father. Um, but I will say that I've spoken out a lot against gun violence, um, and, 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 and you sitting in front of me, uh, you know a little bit about, uh, gun violence from another perspective. Right. You've been shot. Right. Five times. As if everything that we talked about wasn't enough <laughs> that you went through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things we haven't talked about. That, that are in this book, Hiatus. Mm. How the hell did you get shot? In the wrong place at the wrong time. That's all I can say. Um, God had me. I, it wasn't for me. I wasn't like, it wasn't nothing like that. I was right. just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And took. Well, walk me through the story. Walk us through the story. Um, I went to uh, it was in New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, see, a lot of people don't know there's a lot more to New Haven, Connecticut than just Yale University. Oh yeah, New Haven is so, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. All of New Haven, mm -hmm. except for Yale. Yale, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. Know, you go exactly. past Yale yep. University, go by past the university, yeah, it's, it's, there's so, no way to run. So what, what happened? I was just like, you know, I, my boys wanted to go hang out. I had, was just coming around um, wanting to, um, was promoting the song Everything. Mm -hmm. um, new label that I had started. Mm -hmm. Just getting my face out there. Mm -hmm. You know, throwing a name, high five around. Mm -hmm. Got invited to a club called Everybody's in Connecticut, in New Haven. Um, backstage, well, not backstage, but behind the building, behind the club, uh, waiting for the promoter to come get us, to bring us inside. So they had some promoters, I mean, some performers in there. I didn't really know them, but they knew of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess their sister had posted to me on their wall and stuff <laughs> like that for, for what they said, what they told me. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, we, you know. Probably a lot of people's sisters that posted to me. Yeah. <laughs> so he was saying that, and, you know, everything was good. We were just vibing and stuff. Next thing you know, it pop, 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 pop. It, it mm. just kept on going. I was, he was. I was like, what is that noise? You know what I'm saying? Before mm -hmm. I was even reacting, I was hearing Then I started hearing pop, pop, pop. It was like, Jesus. it was too much going on. And then I'm, I'm seeing chalk bouncing off the wall. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know I was hit or anything at that particular point. So it was like a, built, a door like that, right? So we go, so imagine all of us trying to get out that one door. Right, right. I, I don't have to imagine. That's how it was, yeah. you know, but yeah. we all outside and the one door was going inside the club. Wow. So we all trying to run you know. inside that one door right. to get inside the club. Right. So we doing that and the guys out here still shooting. Right. So I fall on the floor. I didn't know I fall on the floor because we all tripping over each other and stuff like that. Right. 
And then um, next thing you know, it, the freaking guy was like over me, shooting in the club, like boom, boom, boom. And I was just like laying on, like, let me just chill for a second, you know. Then I, I felt, I had my hand on my, on my stomach, on like on my abdominal area. You ever had like a wet t-shirt, a wet t-shirt on? You know that nasty feeling when it's wet? Mm -hmm. That's what I felt. But you didn't feel no pain. No, no. I'm telling you, what I felt was wetness. Mm -hmm. Just like a wet t-shirt, right? Like yeah. nasty, soggy wetness. I'm like, damn, somebody, somebody threw liquor on me. I go like this and I see red. Now I'm like, okay, what's going on? Then again, I'm noticing my shirt's getting darker and darker. I said, like, damn, I got shot. And I remember my boy, my manager at the time, he had all my stuff in his, in his bag, like posters and stuff like that. And he was, I was like, yo, Carlos, I'm, I've been hit, I've been hit. So we started running, in, now we inside the club. I didn't know how many times I took a slug. I, I'm running inside the club. The guys are still shooting. You know, Jesus. everybody is running. I don't know how I made it outside the club through the front door. I mm. went from the back all the way to the front. Oh, yeah. We got out the front. That's when I realized. At that point. Because all the adrenaline stopped. Like yeah. the adrenaline was flowing, so I didn't you have time flowing. to really. Yeah. But when I got outside the doors, when I started succumbing to my, my injuries, you know what I'm saying? I remember being dizzy. I remember like fading out. And I was like, yo, but I remember once again, thank God for military school. Military school kicked in. I said, look, bro, I need you to go to the main road, main street, the main street, and go get the ambulance, yo, because mm -hmm. they're not going to come. You need to flag somebody down. You know what I mean? Right. And he was like, no, I don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave you. I said, bro, I promise you. I will be here when you get back because I wanted to live. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I started, I started relaxing. I started counting to 10. I started breathing. And I was just praying. I was just breathing. I didn't worry because I didn't want my blood to start going fast. I wanted to slow my blood down. Right. I want to slow my heart rate down. So my blood, my, my heart don't pump so fast, you know, getting rid of the blood. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I remember all that training, man, all that training. Then I was just chilling. And then I focused on God and gospel records. You know what I'm saying? And I was just laying on the floor. Then next thing you know it, the guy jumped off a motorcycle. It was an off-duty fireman. He jumped off a motorcycle. And, he, and then he see me on the floor. Then he started assessing, what happened, what happened? And then you still hearing shots. Jesus. You still hearing shots. Like 80 shots went off that day, man. You still hearing shots. And um, he was like, what happened? I said, I got shot. I got shot. Then my boy came and everything. Then he started taking off my clothes, looking for the wound because they couldn't, didn't see the wound. Mm -hmm. And then I guess when he realized where seen one of the wounds, he was like, told my boy, he was like, yo, you need to call his wife. When I heard that, I ain't go front. I got scared. So let me ask you a, a question. Um, recovery, how, how long did you spend in the hospital? I was in the hospital for like two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. Yeah. Wow. Um, in the interest of time, we got we, we got to we, this book, man. Hiatus. Yeah, man. We got it. We, we got to. We got to get people to read this book. We got to get people to read this book. Yeah, they got to read it. Uh, well, will there be a sequel to your book? Yeah. Hiatus book two. Okay. I wasn't going to write it because, because I didn't want to, because I realized after writing this book that I heard certain, certain people, not really heard them, but they did, I, I, I did hurt some people, but it was my truth and they had a lot to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Let me say this to you. When you write a book about your life, no man is an island. And so one of the negatives to writing about your truth is this you're going to expose other people's truths. Right, right, and right. And that's just what it is. Right, right. And the type of person you are and the type of life that you've lived, your life has touched a lot of other people. So unfortunately for them, their truths are going to be exposed as well. But you know what, though? The important point is that, that, that it's therapeutic 
if if you didn't sell not one book, I got you it got off it, my chest. You got it off yeah, your right. chest. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got it off your chest. Mm. And sometimes in life, you got to be a little bit selfish. Yeah. You got to be a little bit selfish and 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 and, and you got to do you got to do for you. And, and and I'm learning that right now because I learned a very important important um lesson from somebody who I would never think that I would teach me something like this and you're definitely right about being selfish because this person showed me how to be selfish. And wait till you hear about hiatus book too. Well, something, <laughs> there's, there's something to be said about life, bro. And that's, there are no such thing as, as mistakes. There's no such thing as accidents. Every single thing that we experience, good or bad, is necessary. It's a part of your journey. Mm -hmm. And although it's not always easy to see what the reason for the season is at the time, mm -hmm. it's, it's always, it's always, always a necessary part of your journey. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to insist that you come back on the show so we can finish this up. Yeah, we but have before to. Before you go, we have I got to. a little bit of a gift here for you, brother. What you got for me, man? So, um, it says, because uh, they can't see, oh, okay, it okay. says, Survivor, we can end gun violence. And from a person who, like yourself, has been affected for the rest of, my, the rest of my life, the rest of your life, because somebody decided they wanted to pull a gun out, I want you to have this as a memory I appreciate it. that you're a survivor. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. And I, uh, real quick, while we got a couple of minutes, man, I want to thank you for all the things you've done for me. And my book, you know, this guy straight up, he's the real deal. Well, I appreciate it, brother. But it's all about, it's about sharing. And I think one of the most important things about your book is that it's going to inspire other people to tell their truths. All right? that, that's the whole point. Thank you so much for Thanks being lot, on my the brother. show. I love you, baby. Love you too. I already know. High five. Sessions Cafe. See you next time.